What's going on, y'all? I'm KM Best, and Second Dinner just announced that High Evolutionary is going to be the next big bad in Marvel Snap, and I wanted to talk to you about what that means. Now, for those who do not know, High Evolutionary, a highly anticipated card, we actually have already had his effect, the data mind, and this now confirms the fact that he's going to be a big bad pretty much confirms these data mines you can see it right next to me but because i know the text is small we're gonna blow it up real quick so you can get a good look at high evolutionary's abilities so as you can see uh high evolutionary is a four cost seven power unit with the ability to unlock the secret ability of all your cards with no abilities so right now that means wasp misty knight shocker Abomination, Thing, Cyclops, and the Hulk will be benefiting from High Evolutionary. Now, note, you don't have to run all of these cards in your deck. Also, note, High Evolutionary itself is a very reasonably costed 4 cost 7 power unit. So before anything else, it's actually the first 4-7 in Marvel Snap, and it's good that people are they're going to be starting to experiment with this type line it's also just you know this is four seven but it unlocks all this other stuff so as you can see each of the cards now has an ability and i'd like to go through all those real quick so you understand what we're talking about wasp gets an on reveal that says afflict two random enemy cards here with minus one power abomination gets an on reveal that says it costs less for each enemy card in play that has been afflicted with negative power misty knight says when you end a turn with unspent energy give another friendly card plus one power shocker says give the leftmost card in your hand minus one cost on reveal the Hulk gains an ongoing ability that says plus two power for each turn you ended with unspent energy. The Thing gains an on reveal ability that says afflict a random enemy card here with minus one power and then repeat this twice more. So an overall minus three power when you play the Thing. And Cyclops gains an ability that says when you end a turn with unspent energy, afflict two random enemies here with minus one power. So as you can see, it's basically like a bunch of different cards in one. It's not even like you just play all these cards with high evolutionary and it's sorted. People have already been theory crafting, you know, let's play Wasp and Abomination with high evolutionary in Thanos Lockjaw because we already want to be playing Wasp. Abomination gets to be a free roll with Soulstone. There's a bunch of different things you can do with it. It's one of the most exciting cards that Marvel Snap has ever released. In my opinion, it is the most exciting card to come out since Thanos. Now, it is expected to come out in the middle of May. So we're looking at a May 23rd release date. And before I get too ahead of myself, I do want to say that graphic was made by Willow Snapping. Huge shout out to Willow. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. You can find a link to his content in the description. Now, the issue... I feel, with High Evolutionary being made a Series 5 exclusive, is that this is now the second card that is sort of a bunch of decks unto itself that has been Series 5 exclusive, right? The first of those is Thanos. Thanos is the card that probably lets you play the most different style of decks or has done so over the course of the existence of Marvel Snap. And... The fact that there's another one, like now we're looking at another incredibly awesome, super cool card going straight to permanent series five. I feel like that rubs me the wrong way. It especially rubs me the wrong way in the context of big bads are supposed to be the perma series fives, right? Thanos, big bad. Galactus, big bad. Kang, a little more iffy, but as the sort of future main villain of the MCU, there is some deference here. High Evolutionary is not that. He just isn't. This is a card being put into Perma 6-5, which means it will always cost 6,000 tokens because it's cool. And probably because it's good. And I don't like the precedent that that sets. The major issue I find with this kind of thing is, do we have to worry that every time they come out with a card this cool, 
it's going to be put into Perma Series 5, regardless of who the character is. Like, High Evolutionary is not a big deal. He's not like someone who's a super famous galactic threat or anything like that. There are tons of big bads in the lore in the game already that are not in Perma Series 5. For example, Doctor Doom or Magneto or Null. There's tons of things that the lore justification would apply to that do not apply to High Evolutionary. And the fact that he's in here, to me, signals that this is going to be how we do it. Now, what does that mean? What it does mean is I'm a little less excited for whenever they release a super cool card that's actually more than one card. This, along with Thanos, like Thanos, okay, fine. It's Thanos, they're the stones. It's cool that he's Perma Series 5, that's dope, right? Whatever, that's fine. But High Evolutionary is purely in here, presumably on power level and being really cool. And I don't know if the best thing for your game is to put all the coolest cards at the most expensive forever, especially if those cards end up being really good. Like, we've seen that they're willing to nerf Cards like Thanos, cards like Galactus, they are willing to target those decks, but I worry that it creates these sort of perverse incentives where if you spent 6,000 on this card, which you will always have to do, they might go in with a lighter touch than necessary. Now, I think the real thing that bothers me about this, though, is that they said that they were going to look into changing card acquisition. And I think I want to point out there are tons of ways to make this better, right? One major way to make this better would be to take High Evolutionary, take the other big bads, and say, we're going to make being a big bad an upside. So I could pitch an idea that would be when you hit 3000 collection level, you pick a big bad and you get it for free. That's one way to make it good that this card is permanently going to be more expensive than other cards like it. Now, I also wanted to address, I have seen people complaining about people who are upset that High Evolutionary is in Series 5. I would like to say, generally the argument that they use is something along the lines of, having this be in Series 5 makes it easier for me to invest tokens in it, because I know my investment will never depreciate. And I would like to say that I think that that argument sucks. Yes, your investment will never depreciate, but you would have gotten it for free if you didn't buy it, and now you won't. Now you have to buy it. There is no upside here. Congratulations on your investment not depreciating the thing you would have gotten for free if you didn't buy it. It's just, I, I find that to be a fairly ridiculous line of argument once you actually dive down into what it actually means. It makes sense on its face, you know, Oh, yeah, you know, I enjoyed buying Thanos. It was great. It was good. It was fine. I enjoyed that. You know, I, I like knowing where I can invest here. But you could have gotten it for free. You could have gotten this card for free. And instead, you are getting it for not free. And there's no upside to it. And I think that's sort of my issue with putting things in Perma Series 5 without weighting it in some way. Like, even if these cards were, you know, say, maybe there was their own section in the shop, and maybe all the big bads cost 5000 instead of 6000 Just anything to make being put a big bad an upside. That is, I think, what would be missing for me. I want big bad status to be an upside rather than a pure downside. Right now, all it means is that this card cannot be obtained for free. That's what it means. You cannot obtain this card by opening it in a box, unless you're like the luckiest man who has ever lived. But generally speaking, it means you have to pay to get it. Now, I think that this is bad, and I think I wish it didn't. I, I, I have some hope for the future, given they've been talking about, you know, making overall changes to consumption. But I do think they need to really think hard about how do we make something being put into big bad good. And there are a ton of ways to do it. We've gone over two here already. And I, I guess I should just say, I don't like having to wonder whenever a new card comes out, if they're going to slap a big price gate on it. If they, Whenever the cool stuff comes out, they're just going to slap a price gate on it. And that's just how it's going to be. Whenever we see a good card come out that we all think is going to be competitively relevant, it's like, well, that's going to be a big bad. And I think also people have been asking about High Evolutionary being big bad because they sort of picked up on this subconsciously. They noticed that like, oh, this card is so cool and so ridiculous that it couldn't possibly be a card we get for free. But like, 
Why not? Why does there have to be a big bad? Why could we not get high evolutionary for free? What actually does it mean that that is happening? I don't know. One point that I think is going to show up a lot is... Well, it's a game with a business model. Of course, they have to put cool things behind a paywall. And I think in order to understand my thought process here, I do want to explain myself in that context, which is for people who are playing in the beta, Marvel Snap has not always been like this. You know, for a while, while everyone is playing in the beta, for the most part, with the, with the exception of Nexus events, every card was obtainable free to play in a reasonable amount of time. Like, within a few months, the Battle Pass cards would rotate into Series 3. You'd get them in Series 3. There's been so much creep in terms of the walls they put up that came out of the token shop, that comes out of their incredibly fast-paced release schedule. And now there are so many things that are in the way of someone who wants to compete actually being able to compete. Imagine High Evolutionary is actually a super competitively viable card like Thanos was. That just gets you to a situation where in order to compete, in order to play the game, the same game other people are playing, you have to pay. And sure, you can maybe take your time, save up 6000 you know, there are plenty of people who are doing that. But right now, what we're seeing is like, you explicitly have to pay for this. And I think a lot of people don't like that. Me personally, I don't like winning because I own more cards than my opponent. I like winning because I made a better deck choice or played better or outthought them or anything like that. I don't want to win because I own cards. That's ridiculous. That doesn't prove anything. The point of getting good at these games, of playing these games, of trying to be good, is that it means something. And if it doesn't mean anything, because all it means is that you had $100 and the guy you're playing against didn't, that's not the kind of game I want to be playing. And I think that's the worry for me, is that we're sort of creeping ever closer to whenever they release something cool and game-breaking, you better pay up. And if you don't pay up, I'm sorry. And I think that's the issue that I see with High Evolutionary. I don't like the precedent this sets. The perfect card for any Series 5 to be based on would be Kang. It's super weird. It's super out there. And no one thinks it's particularly good. That's perfect. That's an example of them actually just putting a card in there because it's super cool and super out there. And it has the right lore implications. That makes sense to me. High Evolutionary, it's just in there because they think it's good. That's it. It's just in there because it opens up a lot of deck building options. That's, that's the only thing that I can think of that would make sense for why this is happening. And that's the part of this I really don't like. I would like if Big Bad status was something beneficial to the players, right? If it meant something other than this investment will not depreciate and there was actually some upside to it in a real sense. As is, High Evolutionary... I will say, I'm super excited for it. I think it's going to be so cool. I think this card is going to be awesome. I'm going to buy it anyway. I guess maybe there's no point in complaining if I'm going to buy it anyway, but I did want to get my thoughts on record here because I do think it's important to ask yourself, like, okay, if you're one of those people who thinks it's good that this thing is going to be in Parma Series 5, why would you want to pay for something that you could have not paid for? Like, the whole system is designed such that you don't have to pay to play, except for, apparently, the coolest cards in the game. And I think that's the sort of contradiction that I'd like to see them alleviate. So, Second Dinner, if you're watching, I appreciate everything you do, but I do want you to make big, bad status something that's good for players, and not just something that says, you can never get this card for free. As always, I've been KM Best. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the battlefields. Thanks again. Have a good one.